What you're about to witness is based on true events. The cold-blooded murder of Tony Ellis and the attempted murder of his 14-year-old son, Lee. Tony and his young family moved into a small town in Gloucestershire where he set about trying to create a better life for him and his family. An hard working man who was married to three young boys. Lee being the eldest at just 14 years of age. And like his brothers, he not only looked up to his dad, he idolised him in every way. This is Terry Moore, the neighbour, Tony's neighbour. Terry was extremely influential and well known in a small town by both the community and the constabulary. And he was known for threatening members of the public with firearms. Over a period of years, Tony had a number of incidents with Terry, eventually leading to a dispute over a boundary fence on land owned by Tony. Tony's neighbour took it upon himself to deliberately trespass onto Tony's land and erect a fence moving his boundary illegally and cutting off access to his family home. He issued his neighbour with a solicitor's letter informing his neighbour of his ownership of the land and to stop trespassing and causing damage. His neighbour ignored all correspondence and as quickly as Tony had removed the fence Another one was erected illegally. Tony could no longer afford any more letters and felt completely powerless. The last thing he could do was remove the fence himself every time his neighbour put it up. His son, Lee, helped his dad as much as he could. But today, Tony had a sense that he should take the fence out alone. What do you want to do? Do you want to come and give me a hand taking this fence down or go back and feed the animals? Oh, I'll come up with you, Dad. I'll tell you what, go back and feed the animals and I'll see you later. No, mm -hmm. I, I want to come up with you. We don't really ever get time, just you and me. And Listen, just go back and feed the animals and I'll see you later. You've got your kestrel to feed, all right? Go back and do that. We'll go back and feed the cash. Do when, take the dogs for a walk. Okay, then tell me when we're going to actually get some time together if it's not now. I want you to go back and feed the animals and take when, them out for a they when want, was They've been locked up all day. Go out and take the, animals out, the dogs out for a run as well. I don't, I'm coming with you. Hey, I'm here now. I hey, may as well come. Hey, I don't want you to, okay? I'm not I want, arguing no, with you. You are arguing with me. Arguing don't, with you. Don't, listen coming. to me. Listen. Listen to me. Go back and feed the animals, feed your kestrel, and I'll see you later. Don't let yourself down. I'm proud of you, boy. I'm proud of you, and I love you. Please, go back home and I'll see you later, all right? Listen, I love you and I'm proud of you, all right? I'll see you later, good boy. After watching his dad drive off, those were the last words his dad would ever say to Lee. Whilst Tony set about clearing a fence again, Terry had assembled a group of men to ambush and deal with Tony. Yeah. 
It's up to you which way you want to go. You ain't worth much to me dead. Or alive. So where'd you want it? In the front? Or the back? You're brave. You're on my lamb guns. I'm gonna call the police. And they get off my fucking land. As Lee approached the group of men talking, he could just about make out someone lying on the floor near them. Lee was spotted by the neighbour's son, Greg Moore. That's Lee. Go and get him. Greg called out Lee's name. As Lee got up to walk towards the men, unaware of the danger, one of the men took aim and fired. Lee was shot in the right arm. He then turned and ran. He ran for his life, hoping anyone would hear and help. Out of nowhere, a neighbour from across the valley appeared and Lee ran straight into his arms, crying hysterically. <laughs> 